Hi everyone, uh, Heather Cooper here with Playing with Paper Crafting. I'm a Canadian independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and um, today I have a card that's made with one of my favorite stamp sets called uh, Treasures of Life. It's in the 2021 um, January to June mini catalog and it's on page um, 91 or 71 sorry it's not quite that big and it is um, inspired by million sales achiever Gail Murray who must be a grandma because I know I have um, very similar photographs of myself with my grandkids I have six grandkids myself and um, so uh, as soon as I saw this um, stamp set I was just thrilled when I saw it I like my heart melted and I had to have it so um, I'm uh, really excited to use it today but what I really want to do is to show you um, how to use watercolor pencils because this is an ideal, um, hi, hi Eunice, glad you could tune in today. Um, this is an ideal set to uh, color with watercolor pencils. Not, not all of them are, because you do have that sort of sketchy look to them uh, when you use the pencils. Although um, you can use things like uh, the uh, water, what are they called now? The water brushes um, um, and the uh, blender pens. And I'll show you a little bit about the blender pens today as well. Um, to smooth out the sketch, you know, sketchy lines from the pencils. But, um, but today I'm going to just leave those um, sketchy lines because uh, that's the nature of the stamp set. So we'll just get started with the card because um, there's a lot to do with it. Although through the magic of television, I have shortened some of those steps for us, so it won't take all day. So I'm starting with crumb cake, just because, I don't know, um, comfort. Crumb cake and comfort just speak to me. And then I'm using some designer series paper from the uh, In Good Taste um, designer series paper series, two different ones that kind of look grandparentish to me. <laughs> Just warm and cozy and um, they have a lot of texture to them. That's us as grandparents. Warm and cozy with a lot of texture. <laughs> okay. So if any of you that are watching have grandkids, how many do you have? I have six. I have four grandsons and two granddaughters, which is interesting because I only had daughters as a mom. I have three daughters. And it's been wonderful to have grandsons because so I didn't know what it was like to have boys and my husband is thrilled to have some grandsons because he was the only male in the house even with our pets when we were growing when the kids were growing up and I'm going to add this on top Yeah, most of our pets were females. We may we may have had a male lizard or something, but that was really small comfort to my husband. Eunice, can you hear me okay? Is my sound level all right? Give me a thumbs up if you can, or uh, just... Oh good, you can hear me. <laughs> if 
five grandkids. Cool. All right, so that's our card base. And I'm just going to set it aside. I'm going to take some very vanilla, which kind of goes with the crumb cake and the um, designer series paper. And I'm going to stamp the images. Oh, I forgot to show you the inside of the card. This is the, uh, the inside. The outside says, grandchildren are the treasures of a long life. And inside it says, the joy of grandchildren is measured by the heart. And there's this heartwarming image on the inside. So what would I do with a card like that? I mean, I'd probably give it to a, a new grandparent or somebody who just had a grandchild. Just to congratulate them. So I'm inking up this image and it's like a line sketch image. So it's meant to be colored or not. You could just stamp it on say crumb cake and leave it like that. Oh good, thanks. Thanks Eunice. Okay, so I've inked that up in memento ink and I'm going to stamp it right here on the very vanilla. Okay, and I'm also going to stamp the heart stamp. Heart in in the palm stamp, and I'm leaving some room because I need to. And then while I'm at it, I might as well clean my stamps. Saves time later when I'm cleaning up. Makes it easier to clean them too. Okay, so I'm using the Memento ink. Um, it's a water-based ink. Okay, if I was going to do any extensive water coloring, I would probably use a um, uh, something like a Stazon, which is a permanent ink and not water-based. Because if I was going to do any water coloring with them, then uh, the water coloring would uh, smudge the lines if of a water-based ink. Okay, now while I'm stamping, I'm going to stamp on the sentiments and hope for the best. However, if I mess up, which I've been known to do, then um, I still have some very vanilla cardstock that I can stamp these on and die cut and put over top. Okay, phew, that worked out. And I always hold my breath when I'm stamping straight onto a card, but I always have a plan B in mind in case it doesn't work out. There we go. Success. Especially when I'm on camera. It's a nice snowy day out here today and a little bit earlier you could probably hear my the birds chirping away out at the bird feeder. We have a lot of birds. Oh no, I'm just using regular um, paper units. Again, if I was going to do extensive watercoloring, I would uh, use either a shimmery white cardstock or watercolor paper. All right, so now we are ready to do our pencil crayon coloring here. 
So I've selected a number of watercolors that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the grandfather's coat. And I just want to show you the technique that I'm going to use. So uh, whenever I use um, any kind of coloring, I like to use the artist's um, hash marks, I'll call them, hash lines, um, to tell me where the shadows are going to be. And that's where I make everything darker. So I'm going to use Knight of Navy. And I'm going to look where the hash lines are. And I'm going to use um, my heaviest pressure on those areas. Oh, and my cat sees the birds out there. And her teeth are chattering. And she's making little... Sounds like, please let me out so I can catch them. But, uh, you know, instinct never dies out. So, I'm using heavy pressure to darken those hash lines. Hope you can see this okay. I'm not going to make you watch me color the whole picture. Because through the magic of television, I have something already colored for you. But I'm just going to show you the technique so you get the idea. And, and wherever anything is shadowed, in other words, something is covering it and blocking the light from it, that's um, another place that I usually use a dark or a heavy pressure. If I'm using um, Stampin' Blends, then I'll use the darker Stampin' Blends on those areas. That's another uh, thing that I could be using right now, is uh, Stampin' Blends. But um, I just wanted to show you the, because it's something that I don't use all that often, are the watercolor pencils. Usually because I don't think of using them. But this, um, this is an ideal stamp set for that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend those um, areas that I've just colored in uh, with the same color but using a lighter pressure. So I'm just going to go over those in the same direction that I colored, but um, I'm going to extend the areas I hope you can see that. It's okay, Pickle. Oh. Yeah, there's been coyotes. I, I heard a, uh, some coyotes, oh, about... A week ago now, maybe two weeks, um, and it sounded like they were right next door in my neighbor's driveway. So they were close. So there are definitely a pack of them living pretty close here. I think the the deer like to come down off the, the hillside n nearby. I know they come up our driveway, the deer do, so Wherever there's deer, there's going to be coyotes. Okay, so I'm extending those lines using lighter pressure. And then using even lighter pressure, I'm just going to go over and extend it even more. But I am going to leave some areas still white. And 
this way we get shading and uh, the play of light on it. Okay, and then I'm going to take an entirely different color. This time I'm using Balmy Blue. And then I'm just going to go over all of it and fill everything in with the Balmy Blue. And And you see the balmy blue creates some real highlights as you're doing this. But I'm, I'm going over everything, so if there's any areas that I didn't quite cover with the Night of Navy, the balmy blue is going to fill them in. Okay, so um, that's kind of the technique. I wanted to show you, um, you can see that um, it's fairly, you know, you can see the pencil lines. And that's the way I wanted it with this. But I just wanted to show you what happens when you use a blender pen. So this is a blender pen. It has a, a fluid in it. Um, that blends the, the lines together. So I just wanted to show you what happens when you use that blender pen. So it kind of melts it. Now you can't, um, on this paper, you can't use it extensively. You can't go over and over it, but once over it would be fine. If you go over it too much, then you wear away the break down the composition of the paper and the paper will pill. But that smooths out those sketchy lines. So if you use it sparingly, it works. Just to show you what that's like. Okay. So um, just to show you now quickly what else I did. I did, um, where's my gray? I used gray for grandpa's hair. I'm just going quickly here. And gray for grandpa's pants. And I used a cherry cobbler for Grandpa's scarf. Okay, and um, I used early espresso for Grandpa's shoes, but I highlighted them a little bit with um, the crushed curry. So there's a little, there was a little bit more. Um, I'll show you in a minute. There's a little bit more uh, early espresso in there. And for the grandson, I used um, Coastal Cabana for his hat. Chook, as we call it here in Canada. and his scarf, which grab his tie to keep him warm. And I made him a red jacket. Oh, can I lift it closer? Um, I can 
Zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that works, Eunice. Uh, so I started with Cherry Cobbler for all the darkened spots, all the darkened areas. And then I colored it, added um, just a lighter cherry cobbler. And then finished it off with real red all over everything. Oh, forgot the color there. I'm going quickly here. I spent much more time on it in my when I did the real one. Okay, and then for the boys' pants, I used um, early espresso. And for his boots, I use Garden Green and Old Olive. Now, oh, I should tell you that um, all these, uh, you'll need two sets of watercolor pencils for these. There's the watercolor pencils and the watercolor pencils assortment too, uh, both of which you can find in the annual catalog. Just look in the index in the back for watercolor pencils. And it will tell you what page they're on. So I started with Garden Green for the hash lines and the shadows. And then extended with the Garden Green. I didn't leave a lot of room for the Old Olive because it's not... It's not as compatible, there, but there wasn't a lot of choices. I think there was only three, and the other was the Granny Apple Green, which is really quite light. So then I just go over it with the Old Olive. Okay, uh, then um, with the one down below, I used a Cherry Cobbler and Real Red for the heart. Starting with the Cherry Cobbler for the shadows. And filling it in with Real Red. Again, this is the fast version. Now, for all the flesh uh, the faces, all the skin colors. I'm using Calypso Coral, which is sort of the best option that we have in the watercolor pencils. So I'm just uh, very lightly coloring in the faces and the hands. I didn't do much in the way of darkening, just because the Calypso Coral is a bit orange for my liking. And for the little boy's cheeks, I used some flirty flamingo just to fill those in a little bit. Uh, when we got to the hands, I did use a little bit of pressure on them, especially for the adult hands. And uh, a little bit less pressure for the child hands and colored them in. Now, through the magic of television, now that you've known all the colors that I've used, here are the finished ones. And now um, I want to show you how I die cut them. So we'll need the big shot here. 
And then I might have to zoom out a bit for this. Uh, whoops, somehow I switched my camera. There we go. All right. So we're going to start with Grandpa. We're going to use um, a rectangular, the stitch rectangles for him. And, ooh, I kind of had those really close. Hmm, it's going to be tough. Well, I'm going to just cut like this. I was going to show you how to um, abbreviate the rectangle, but I have to do it a different way here. So sometimes you need a rectangle a little bit shorter that fits into the back, so the backing of um, that you want it to be in. But this time I had to do it that way anyway. Um, so what I want to do is have it fit into <clears throat> the back I'm going to use from the stitch so sweetly. So I want it to fit inside this, which it pretty much does. All I need to do is to just get the stitching on the top. So I'm just going to make sure it fits inside there and make sure that I've got the stitching on the top. So I have to match up. Sometimes it's easier to turn it over to see that I have it where I want it. So I want it right within all those spaces there. And I can actually put the cutting pad right down on it this way. Oops. Static. And just run it through that top there and bring it back and that will get the stitches on where I want them. Okay. Alrighty. And then I want to cut um, <clears throat> the hands using the stitched framelits, or the stitched shape framelits. So I'm going to use the small circle here. Mine got warped somehow. I think it was during a class. And I've never been able to um, unwarp it. So those two are die cut, and now what I want to do is die cut the backing out of soft suede. So I have a piece of soft suede here. Now, um, on my blog this morning at playingwithpapercrafting.com, uh, you're going to find all the materials that I used today and the measurements. So. You can hop on over to my blog once we're done here and you'll find out all that you need. So that's uh, www.playingwithpapercrafting.com. One little tip that I have for you, you may have noticed that when you're doing like a rectangle going through the um, uh, Stampin' Cut, I, I hope I did, I did say Big Shot, didn't I? Such um, a reflex that so we've been using it for so long. This is a stamp and cut and emboss machine. But whenever you're going through a die cutting machine with a, like a rectangle that has a straight edge like that, you notice that it makes a really big bump when it goes through. You can change that if you have a narrow enough piece of paper by just turning it slightly on an angle so that it goes through a corner first and it's 
a much easier quiet transition. Did you see that? There was no bump at all. There was a bump at the end there, but when it first went through, there was nothing, so. Okay, so now that we've got our two backings, this was um, a stitch shape circle that was one bigger than the one I used for the hearts. So that will go on there. And then this was the Stitch So Sweetly dies that you can adjust to make nice backings for the stitched rectangles. All right, so let's put away our stamp and cut and emboss machine, which I love and are so much better than die cutting machines I've had in the past. Okay. Now we'll just get them set up here. I'm going to use my stamp and seal. And uh, today I remembered to bring my silicone craft mat so that I can get my stamp and seal going really easily. I'm going to add that to go. It's probably down too far. So I'm hoping you can see it. Okay, and center this. Great. Now we're going to add Grandpa to the card using dimensionals. Hey, thanks for your comments, Eunice. So nice to spend time with you, even when we can't get together. Can hardly wait before till we can have in-person classes again. Sigh. I think I've heard that according to the schedule, I would be able to get my vaccine by May and June. So by the end of June I would be and that's if everything goes as schedule, which it hardly ever does, as you well know. <laughs> but that doesn't mean my customers would all get it by then. So I'm thinking it'll be the fall before we can start in-person classes again. Okay, so we'll put Grandpa on there with dimensionals. And then we'll just use Stamp and Seal. Is it still running? Nope. So a little run on my silicone craft mat, and here we go. Isn't that slick? Okay, and we'll add a little heart next to the sentiment. And our card is all done. So this week, this Saturday, from 1 to 3, I'm having a um, catalog launch for the mini catalog, the January to June mini catalog. It's a free event, um, and if you haven't signed up for it yet, um, I will add in a comment below this video, I will add the link for you to sign up, but you have to do it like today or tomorrow because um, I'm going to be prepping for that class starting on probably Wednesday. So, um, do get your registrations in for that 
It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be on Zoom, and there'll be games and uh, a chance to get through, go through the catalog and see what's in there. A chance to see some samples from the catalog, and a chance to go through my inventory of retired products, which have been updated with the um, retired products from the uh, holiday holiday mini catalog. So. Anyway, that's all for today. I'm glad you could tune in, and uh, we'll see you next Monday. Okay, and or hopefully at the um, catalog launch on Saturday. All right, talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.